Welcome back, Brookings Bio students. This is Mrs. Rydell, and we're going to continue our uh, slideshows looking at the process of uh, cellular respiration. What's going to happen to our pyruvic acids next? In our last slideshow, we took our glucose and we um, did glycolysis in the cytoplasm. Notice we're outside of the mitochondria in the cytoplasm of the cell. We're going to split our sweet. Um, glucose is our sugar molecule, the sweet that we're going to break in half. We're going to break this bond and uh, resulting reaction is going to produce two three carbon molecules called pyruvic acid. We're going to put in a little ATP to get it jump started. Remember we talked about activation energy. We're going to put in a little ATP to get it going. and But we're going to get four ATPs back. So we're really gaining two ATPs. We have a net gain of two ATPs. And we're going to charge up a couple of those NAD plus electron carriers. And we talked in our last um, slideshow, our little last video, about what's going to happen in the cell if there's no oxygen or low oxygen available, we're going into that fermentation process that allows us to regenerate those NAD plus carriers and keep glycolysis happening. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going to happen to those pyruvic acids if there is oxygen available. We're going to send them into the mitochondria and let's take a little uh, refresh our brain, our bio brain, about uh, what we learned about mitochondria back in our cell parts chapter, remember? Mitochondria is a double membrane organelle. There's an outer membrane, a folded inner criste membrane, and that's where the chemical reactions are that are going to happen to finish breaking down our pyruvic acids to the final product. Um, notice we, we still have a lot of energy um, in, in that pyruvic acid. We've really only broken it in half, and there's a lot more energy stored in those molecules. So we're going to pass our um, pyruvic acid into our mitochondria. I'm going to send it across. And notice now this is this little shape here is representing the mitochondria in the cell. Let's put a little label on here. This is going to be my with oxygen pathway. So if oxygen is available to the cell, instead of doing fermentation, we're going to send it across into the mitochondria. So let's do a little labeling here. I'm going to put um, outer membrane here. This is my outer membrane. Remember, mitochondria like chloroplasts have a double membrane. So there's an outer membrane. There's an inner criste membrane. That's this folded kind of wavy one in the inside here. And then really, if you look, we've kind of created two compartments. There's a place way inside the criste here. This is the matrix. And we also have a space here between the two membranes, the intermembrane space. We're going to label that also, intermembrane space. Inter means between, like an interstate highway goes between states. Um, if you think about I-29, runs through South Dakota up to North Dakota, and it's, it runs between states. Inter means between, so it's the space that's between these two membranes. Okay, so we're bringing in our pyruvic acid now. Remember, each one of those has three carbons, so we're going to follow our carbons. Let's keep our carbon color going here. And I'm going to label these three carbons here. And these three carbons here are the carbons that came from pyruvic acid passing. So this is pyruvate here, pyruvic acid. We're going to send that into way into the matrix here of my mitochondria. And the next part of our process now is we're going to charge up these pyruvic acids and put them in a form that we can feed them into the next part of our cycle. And we're going to have a helper enzyme do that. Remember, all of these chemical reactions that are happening use enzymes to help the process happen more quickly in cells. And um, sometimes enzymes need helper molecules to help those reactions happen. They're called coenzymes. And we're going to use a uh, coenzyme helper called coenzyme A. So I'm going to kind of put a little color on that so it can keep track of where it's going. Here's my coenzyme A. 
and it's going to receive those carbons from pyruvic acid and put them in a form where they can feed into the next part of our next part of our process. So we're going to take our coenzyme A. We're going to um, break apart the pyruvic acid. We're going to take off one of the carbons, and the other carbon, two carbons, are going to attach onto coenzyme A. So I'm going to keep my color going here so I can keep track. These two carbons are coming from pyruvic acid. And notice now we lost a carbon. It's going to go out as a gas. So think about what gas you know that has carbon in it. And that's what this little gas cloud is. We're going to send that one carbon out as carbon dioxide, CO2. That's our little gas cloud here. So I'm going to send one of these carbons out as a gas. Remember, we exhale carbon dioxide as part of this process. And then the other two carbons are attached to this coenzyme helper. Coenzyme, uh, coenzymes a lot of times um, are made from vitamins. It's one of the reasons we need vitamins in our food when we talk about vitamin B or vitamin A. Um, this is a coenzyme helper that comes from a vitamin, and it's going to help this process of feeding those carbons into the next part of our um, process. Whenever you break a bond, you can store some of that energy. So we're going to charge up. We're going to keep our color going here. Look over here what color you colored your NADs, and we charge them up to NA. So I'm going to take NAD+, plus, and I'm going to charge it up to... NADH. I'm going to put a little power around that molecule to show that it's a high energy electron carrier. Okay, now we made this molecule that's kind of a combination. It's got these carbons from pyruvic acid and it's partly that coenzyme helper. That molecule is called acetyl CoA part this acetyl group and part coenzyme. It's a combination molecule. Okay, so now we have our carbons ready to feed into the next part of our cycle. And they're going to join with carbons that cycle in this process. This is a cycle. Can you see the circle? Remember we had Calvin cycle in our, in our uh, photosynthesis uh, chapter. This is called the Krebs cycle. It's named for a guy named Krebs. That was his last name, Krebs Cycle. And so notice it's not an apostrophe S. The, his actual last name was Krebs, and so it's called the Krebs Cycle. And so I'm going to color code this a little bit. I want to keep track of where those carbons from pyruvic acid are going to go. So I'm going to color code these carbons a little different color. Uh, let's make them red here. So I'm going to keep these carbons separate. I'm going to join my carbons from pyruvic acid onto this little molecule here. We're not going to worry about intermediates. Remember, we're just worrying about what's coming in and what's going out. But we're going to um, attach these onto here. So I'm going to keep my color going. And look up here before you color in. Notice we're going to take these four carbons from the cycle. And I'm going to add my two carbons from, add my two carbons from, that are coming off of the acetyl-CoA. And notice they kind of stick in the middle to make this molecule. This is the one molecule that we're going to learn the name of. It's called citric acid. And the reason we're going to learn the name is because that molecule um, is another name for this cycle here. Not only is it called Krebs cycle, sometimes it's called the citric acid cycle. And it's named for that first molecule that gets formed in part of the, uh, doing the cycle. Okay, so now let's look at our, um, our coenzyme A. Once it drops off those carbons and feeds them into the cycle, it can go back up and pick up an, uh, two more carbons. Remember, you got two pyruvic acids. So once the first one goes through, it can pick up another one. We're going to feed those carbons into the cycle, drop them off. It can go back and get recharged again. It's kind of a, it's, it's a rechargeable molecule, just like we had ATP rechargeable. Our electron carriers are rechargeable. 
that coenzyme A is also rechargeable. We can add, keep adding in the carbons, feeding them into the Krebs cycle. And then these molecules now are going to cycle through those carbons as they move through the cycle. One by one, they're going to be released, chopped off, broken off, and they're going to come off as a gas molecule. Now I'm going to put a little CO2. Ooh, I've got to keep my carbon. Keep my blue collar. Okay, so as these carbons cycle through the Krebs cycle, we're going to break off those carbons one at a time, and they're going to go out as a gas, CO2. So look at my molecule. I put in two carbons, and when they go out as CO2, I'm going to get two carbon dioxide. Notice we had three carbons coming in originally. One carbon got lost back when we charged up our coenzyme A, and then two more are going to come off as carbon dioxide from the Krebs cycle. So total of three carbons. All of the carbons that come in from pyruvic acid are going to end up as a carbon dioxide. And any time you break bonds now, once we, once we break these carbons off, that four carbon molecule can cycle back and pick up some new ones. That's why it's called a cycle. And it's going to repeat and keep um, feeding in those carbons from pyruvic acid, running through the cycle and we're going to remove them as carbon dioxide. Anytime we break bonds now, we also can make some of those energy molecules. So um, one of the things that we're going to make as we cycle through the cycle is I'm going to take a little bit ADP and add the P, and I'm going to get an ATP. Every time one pyruvic acid comes through the cycle, we're going to get one ATP. We're going to get three two here and one up here, three carbon dioxides. And we're also going to charge up some of those electron carriers. Look at what color we used up here for our NAD. I'm going to do NAD plus, and we're going to do three of those to get three NADHs. And I'm going to give it a little juice, a little power. It's a high energy electron carrier. And the other carrier that we learned about, remember the other carrier that we had was FAD. When I charge up FAD, I'm going to get, let's keep my color going, FAD, and use your H color because we had H, the same H's that are going on the NADH can add on to the FAD carrier. And remember FADH2, I get two of those. I'm going to give that a little power too because that's a high energy electron carrier now. So if you look at the cycle, what we've done is take those carbons from pyruvic acid, feed them into the Krebs cycle, chop them off one at a time, and store the energy as that happens. And now, so let's kind of do a little tally here, a little tally. For every glucose, one glucose coming from glycolysis and feeding into the Krebs cycle now. For every one glucose, remember this is C6, H12O6, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get six carbon dioxides. Each of those carbons goes off as a carbon dioxide. I'm gonna get one ATP, so I'll use our ATP color, one ATP, and each, Two pyruvic acids, I get to cycle two times. I get to get two of those because one pyruvic acid makes an ATP. The second pyruvic acid is going to make an ATP. So I'm going to get two total ATPs. And notice now I'm going to get an NADH up here, and I'm going to get three NADHs down coming off the Krebs cycle. So I'm going to get a total of four NADHs. And remember, each time I go through, I get one glucose there's two pyruvic acids so we're going to times that by two right, to get eight and each time i go through the cycle i'm going to get one let's use our fad color i'm going to get one fadh2 let's use our h color here fadh2 and we're going to give it some juice and I go through two times because I got two pyruvic acids. So total of two FADHs, eight NADHs, 
and two ATPs, let's make our equals here, two ATPs, six carbon dioxide. However, we're still not done. We kind of broke down our pyruvic acids, but I got a lot of these energy molecules now, energy, high electron energy carriers that still have some power in. So stay tuned and see what happens in our next uh, video.